Hi, and welcome to lesson six. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the different types of network nodes. In the first step, we're going to begin with the classification of network nodes. But before talking about quantum networks and quantum nodes, let's see how nodes are classified in the classical internet. So the job and the goal of classical internet is to support communication among a set of end nodes. And there's a whole bunch of infrastructure nodes in between, in the middle, that make this communication possible. The sophistication, the complexity, and the sheer number of types of boxes has grown over time. And sometimes the boundaries between their functionalities and their definitions become blurred. So we will keep things simple for now. So what type of end nodes do we have? We mostly we connect with our computers, our laptops, we connect to servers, our cell phones, uh, Internet of Things sensors. These are the end nodes. Next type of nodes that we have are the routers. These boxes understand the, the topology of the network and how to move packets from one link to another, mostly without modification. Next type of boxes are switches. These are similar to routers, but they're a lot simpler and they've got limited knowledge of routing. They are more short range and they're not visible to anyone that is far away. Finally, we've got the repeaters, which we talked about previously. These are hardware nodes for boosting physical signals. As physical signals propagate in a fiber, they get attenuated, and it's the job of these repeaters to boost them to higher, uh, higher signal levels such that they can reach their destination. These are the main sort of types of nodes that we have uh, talked about or we will talk about also in, in the rest of the lesson. Further types of nodes for the classical internet are middle boxes. For example, your firewalls, your NAT or network address translation boxes. And other types of infrastructure nodes such as DNS servers, PKI servers and management boxes. These last two, the middle boxes and other infrastructure nodes, don't really have a quantum equivalent yet, but they might do in the future. So look, let's look at uh, how are nodes characterized. They're characterized by their external behavior, which is defined by a set of interfaces and protocols. An interface defines a boundary between two parts of a system. This could be hardware boundary, or it also could be a software boundary. While the protocol defines content and semantics of messages and behavior of nodes. So every time that we want different nodes to communicate, we need a strict set of rules that must be followed. And both of these interfaces and protocols are defined by a specification. Specifications tend to begin their life informally as research ideas or research projects. And as they grow and they advance to international st standards, more people try to uh, adopt them, sometimes adapt them to their needs, discussion happens, and then um, a um, standardized international set is agreed upon. This promotes interoperability and robustness as research prototypes evolved into commercial products. Here's an example of an uh, early spec for the interface message processor over here. It's 237 pages long. So just writing down all the rules for the messages, all the formats, uh, takes 237 uh, pages. This is just to give you an idea of how complex these uh, systems really are. Another example of a spec is the Ethernet spec over here. It doesn't contain only the format for all the messages, but also all the details about the hardware, how thick the uh, co connection cables need to be, or what the um, uh, connection ends need to look like. Furthermore, we also have what are known as RFCs. Uh, these stand for Request for Comments. And these specify um, various protocols that the, the internet uh, rests on. We've got the TCP, which is 85 pages, the IP, which is 45 pages. So writing down all these rules is not an easy task and it takes a very long time. Now, the different node types conform to different subsets of specifications to fulfill different roles in the network. A classical internet is a little bit different from the quantum internet. So let's ask us the question. What are the node types of a quantum network? And here they are. 
we're going to talk about the end nodes, but in this case, they're going to be our quantum computers and quantum sensors and a few other specialized uh, types of nodes. We've got the repeaters, which we have talked about uh, extensively in this, uh, in this module so far. And remember, these are different from classical repeaters. They don't just boost the signal. They use entanglement swapping. And then we've got other types of support nodes, such as the Bell State Analyzers or the BSAs, and also generators of optical states and optical switches. We're going to talk about all of these in the current lesson. So, see you in the next step.